Hi, this is Steve Yee, Director of Product Management for SQL Azure. In this walkthrough, I'll demonstrate how easy it is to extend, share, and integrate your SQL Azure data with any application via an OData service. First, we'll review the benefits of using SQL Azure. Then we'll do a brief review of an existing application built with ASP.NET MVC3 that stores employee expense reports in SQL Azure. I'll then enable this server application to expose some of the data via an OData service. Finally, I'll show how a variety of different client applications can interact with this OData service, and I'll demonstrate how to use the OData service within Excel, JavaScript, and also Windows Phone 7. So let's get started. When you move your data to SQL Azure, you can free up time and reduce risk associated with managing and maintaining your own in-house database servers. Once in SQL Azure, your database is highly available, reliable, and scalable, and can be accessed from anywhere via the internet. SQL Azure is also highly flexible and allows you to pay as you grow, eliminating the need for upfront capital expenditures. OData, which stands for Open Data Protocol, is a protocol that is designed for querying and updating data over web-based standards and technologies such as HTTP, AtomPub, JSON, and XML. It enables easy integration of data with any desktop, web, or mobile-based application, regardless of programming platform, be it .NET, Java, or open source. OData provides a new level of interoperability as client applications on any platform can access and integrate with these services. This includes clients running on non-Microsoft platforms and mobile devices such as the Android or iPhone. I'll start by opening the .NET solution that we created during a previous walkthrough. I'll be using the free version of Visual Studio called Microsoft Visual Web Developer 2010 Express, but you can follow along with any version of Visual Studio 2010. Before you start, make sure that you have the Azure SDK for Visual Studio, including the Windows Azure emulator installed. You can install it from the following URL. As you can see, the solution includes a cloud service project so that we can run the application in the local Windows Azure Compute Emulator as we develop the application. We can then easily deploy the application to Windows Azure when we're ready. So let's run the application via the cloud project and remind ourselves of what we have. And as you can see, we have the web application that provides a list of expenses associated with employees and the ability to edit those expenses. The data is being stored in an expense database running on SQL Azure. We built this application by using an Entity Framework model that is connected to our SQL Azure database. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at our application. As you can see, our model includes employees, expense reports, and expense details tables. While this ASP.NET MVC web application allows users to access expense data via their web browser, we can expand our capabilities so that other applications can integrate with this data. Prior to cloud and OData technologies, web service APIs were developed just to read and update the data. But now, much of this functionality can be made available just by exposing the data via an OData service. So let's go ahead and enable our application to expose an OData service. Let's right-click Expense Web and add a new item. Next, select WCF Data Service, and let's give it a name of expensedataservice.svc. Now click Add. OK, as you can see, we have a new class created for us that is based on the data service class, which is going to do most of the work for us. There are a few comments in here to help us configure the data source we want to use, so let's do that. Let's change this section of the code to use our Entity Framework Expenses model. Now we can set up some access rules for what data should be exposed. I'll expose the expense reports and the employees table by changing my entity set to expense reports and add a new row for employees. So let's rebuild the solution. Then I will right click expenses data service.svc and then select set as start page. Okay, let's rebuild the project and make the service our startup page. As we can see here, our service responds to our browser requests with some details about the service. And we can see employees and expense reports information is available. 
So let's demonstrate some OData queries right here in the browser to give you a feel for the service that we've enabled. First, let me add expense reports to the end of the URL to get to expense reports entity data. Okay, the service returns a list of expense reports in XML format. Now let's briefly look at the query flexibility of this OData service. Let's say I want to just see expense reports in the pending state and wish to order those expenses by business purpose. I can do that easily by just appending filter and order by parameters directly to my URL. As you can see, now I get the results I requested. While this is a simple example, the OData protocol has many features beyond simple filtering and sorting. Updating data and extracting data from related entities is also supported. However, for the purpose of this walkthrough, I just want to give you a feel for the many capabilities of the service we just enabled. Okay, our server setup is complete. Let's keep this service running locally, and let's build a few OData clients locally to consume the OData service we just enabled. Let's start with accessing our OData service from Microsoft Excel. Perhaps there are some calculations we would like to do within the expense data. So let's open an Excel worksheet. I'm going to use the Power Pivot add-in, which I've already installed. Let's open the Power Pivot window to configure a data source to be our OData service. We can do this by choosing Data Feeds and pasting in our OData service query. Now click Next. I can preview and choose the data I want from the feed here, but let's just click Finish. The Table Import Wizard successfully imported that data, so click Close. Now you can see the data easily displayed in Excel. Back in Visual Web Developer Express, our OData service can also be easily consumed by JavaScript code running in HTML on a browser on the client side. We'll open the HTML file from the File Explorer to show the code. As you saw earlier, the OData service was returning data to our browser in XML format. However, the service also supports returning the data as JSON, which is what we want when dealing with JavaScript. If we look closer at the code, we can see exactly what is involved. As you can see, this is just an HTML file that has a reference to a jQuery library. All we do here is wire up the click event of the Show Expenses button and make a jQuery get JSON call to get data from our OData service. Then we just append each line of the results to our expenses section of the page. I did add a filter just to show expenses that are new, but again notice that I can do that directly in the request URL rather than in the jQuery code. Since this is just an HTML page, let's just run it from File Explorer. By clicking on the Query Expenses via OData button, we will connect to our service URL and return the data we requested. Great, that was nice and easy. Next, let's try consuming this OData service from a Windows Phone 7 application. Again, switching back to Visual Studio 2010 Express, we can now create a Windows Phone 7 application to consume our OData service. To develop for Windows Phone 7, you'll need the Windows Phone 7 developer tools, including the phone emulation software in integration with Visual Studio. If you don't already have Visual Studio 2010, you can download 2010 Express for Windows Phone for a similar experience. Now, I'll create a new Windows Phone 7 project and select the Windows Phone Databound Application Template, but you can use any of these Windows Phone templates as a good starting point. Enter a name for your project and click OK. Once the project is created, our next step is to generate a client-side proxy file that we can use to access our OData service from the phone. To do this, you can download the OData file from the following link. This download includes an updated version of the data service util.exe utility, which we need to generate the proxy. We can do that by entering the address of our OData service along with a couple of other parameters. Once this proxy is generated, we can include it in our project along with a reference to the Microsoft.DataServices.Client library that it references. Complete the installation of the OData client library for Windows Phone 7, and we'll be ready to move on to the next step in building our application. So, once we have our proxy class generated, 
All we need to do is specify our data service location and run a query. You can see here we are using a view model class to load up some data when the main page loads. In this method, all we do is tell our proxy class where our service is located and what data we want to query. Now we can run this in the phone emulator to see what we get. Great. We now see our data from SQL Azure extended all the way to our phone. So in this session, we've demonstrated how easy it is to expose our SQL Azure data to other applications via an OData service hosted in Windows Azure. We also walked through several client applications that use the data we exposed, including Excel, JavaScript, and Windows Phone 7. There is also a great example of a Silverlight application that uses the OData feed from Netflix that is worth checking out. You can see this application and get the code at the link provided. And finally, the SQL Azure OData service is currently available via SQL Azure Labs. This service will allow you to directly access your SQL Azure database via the OData protocol without having to host your own service in the cloud as we've done here. Thanks for watching and please visit sqlazure.com for the latest information and resources.